Welcome back to the R&D Lab. I'm Greg and today we're going to show you the all new base solution for Harley Davidson motorcycles. Today we're going to show you how to install the brand new HD14 sub kit. This is an add-on sub solution that gives you the extra base you're looking for. Before we begin, let's start by making sure you have the proper tools you'll need for this installation. On top of the standard go-to toolbox, you're going to need a tuning guide link on a separate tab, a stubby number two Phillips head screwdriver, a reciprocating saw with a short fine tooth blade, some alcohol and a cloth for cleaning your surfaces, a file for cleaning your cut edges, an assortment of drill bits, and some masking tape. Now, this is an add-on kit. It's designed to go with your current Rockford Fosgate sound system. If you're not familiar with the disassembly of your motorcycle, we suggest that you take a moment and watch one of our initial stage kit installation videos that matches your model bike. Okay, let's get started. There are a lot of pieces in this kit, so only grab what you need as you need it. This kit has two boxes in the overpack. They're labeled brake and clutch side. Open the clutch side box first. This will contain the majority of parts for this install. Now pull out the template, the grills, the pass-through and the pass-through harness, as well as a blister pack of screws. All right, now you want to empty to remove your clutch side saddlebag. Now for video purposes, we remove the lid. You may find it easier, but it's not necessary for this install. If you currently have our 6x9 lid kit, you'll need to remove the pigtail harness and the wire mounts. This kit provides new connections for you. To prep your saddlebag, we always recommend that you tape the surrounding area to protect your paint. Once you're done with that, grab the cutting template and you'll see how it fits snug into the shock well. This gives you all the locations that will need to be drilled and cut. You'll notice that the blister pack has a hardware for both saddlebags. Remove four of the mounting screws. The four mounting holes are located in the center of the template. Press the template tight to the bottom edge to ensure placement and pre-drill an eighth inch hole and set your first screw. Now you can pre-drill the remaining three mounting holes. Now tighten all your mounting screws in place. Now you can drill the three 3 16 inch holes and the one half inch hole for your pass through. You'll use a 5 16 inch drill bit for your pilot holes or the cutout. Using all the pilot holes will give you better control and accuracy of your cut. So keep the drill bit tight to the inside of these pilot holes. Now you'll use a reciprocating saw to cut your bag. Again, staying tight to the inside of the template because you could always shave off more later if needed. You want to be careful along the bottom, keep your cut shallow as not to hit the saddlebag rail notch. Leave the tab connections for last. This will ensure the template does not move during this process. After you finish cutting the tabs, dry fit your grill. Now remove the tape and take a moment to clean up your cut. Use a file to remove any burrs or shavings from the cutout. 
Now grab your grill and test the fitment. You want to make sure the seat's tightly against the bag. Clean the area with alcohol and a cloth. Remove the 3M backing tape and secure the grill into place. Now you'll need that stubby screwdriver to mount the backing plate to the grill. Grab four of the grill screws from the blister pack and attach. Your next step will be to install the pass-through wiring harness. This contains a Deutsch connector for your subwoofer enclosure, as well as the spade connectors for your Rockford Fosgate bag lid speakers. If you do not have speakers in the lids, the cable with the spade connections will not be used. You can tape or zip tie these to the subwoofer cable to keep them out of the way. This harness is designed to lay across the bottom and up the front corner of your bag. Be sure to wipe this area down with alcohol for the best results of the 3M tape. We're going to recommend that you use two of the pass-through screws from the blister pack to hold the harness in place. Feed the four wires through the half-inch hole for the pass-through connection. After securing the harness location, peel the 3M backing off the first section. Align and adhere. Repeat these steps for each section. Now we can mount your pass-through retaining bracket. We provided patches in the blister pack for the cutouts if you have the original TMS69BL14 kit. You will need to remove the set screws you installed for the harness first. Clean the area with alcohol, connect your wiring, and test fit. Once confident with the location, peel the 3M backing tape and align the three mounting holes. A small trick is using a hole guide in the top, then line up the lower holes. You can now reinsert the bottom two screws and secure the wiring harness. Your top screw will have a washer and a nut for connection. Great job, you're done with this bag for now. If you took the lid off of this installation, you can reattach it and move the bag to the side. Moving over to the brake side saddle bag, let's empty and remove this from the bike. Now out of the box labeled brake side, you want to grab the template, the grill mount, as well as the pass-through and the pass-through harness. You'll notice a couple extra pre-drill holes on this template. These will be for your bulkhead wiring to the amplifier. We're going to repeat many of the same steps we took on the clutch side, beginning with taping the area around the cutting template. Now seat the template in place and start with your first mounting hole and then follow that up with the other three mounting holes to ensure there's no movement. Okay, now you'll need to drill the three 3 16 inch holes and the one half inch hole for the pass-through. The pass-through on this side is used for the TMS69BL14 lid speaker. Even if you don't currently have this kit, we're going to recommend that you do this install now. This way you'll be wired and ready if you decide to add it in the future. Now you'll use the provided hole saw bit for the center hole of your bulkhead. 
This bit is located in the clutch side box. Once again, you'll use a 5 16 inch drill bit for the pilot holes of the cutout. Using all the pilot holes will give you better control and accuracy for your cut. Keep your drill bit tight to the inside of these pilot holes. Now, once again, you'll use a reciprocating saw to cut your bag. I want to remind you to stay tight to the inside of the template. You can always shave off more later if needed. Leave the tabs connected for last. This will ensure the template does not move during this process. After you finish cutting your tabs, take a moment to clean up your cut and dry fit your grill. You want to make sure that this seats tightly against the bag. Clean the area with alcohol and a cloth, then remove the 3M backing tape and secure the grill into place. Now, once again, you need that stubby screwdriver to mount the backing plate to the grill. Grab the four grill screws from the blister pack and attach. Your next step will be to run the pass-through harness and mount the pass-through retaining bracket. Make sure you clean the area first, secure your harness, and secure the retaining bracket just like you did for the clutch side. Now let's pull the amplifier from the brake side box, as well as the mounting bracket that's located on the clutch side box. Use a provided 3mm Allen wrench to remove the protective cover over the control panel. Now open the tuning guide that we referred to in the beginning of this video and make your setting adjustments. Once you have the amplifier tuned to specs, reattach the control panel cover. You'll see that the amplifier bracket has retaining clips on one end and screw holes on the other. Now slide the amplifier into the bracket retaining clips with the control panel over the screw holes. Now use the two screws provided in the blister pack labeled amp bracket screws to secure the amplifier. Once that's done, clip on the amplifier bracket lid. This is where you want to test fit your amplifier into the saddlebag. Be sure to leave about three quarters of an inch, basically your fingertips, clearance from the bottom of the wiring harness. Clean the surface with alcohol and then peel your 3M tape and secure into place.
Now you'll screw the bulkhead to the saddlebag. You have two screws labeled amp harness in the blister pack. Push the bulkhead firmly through the saddlebag and tighten. Now that we're done with this bag, if you took the lid off for this installation, you can reattach it and move the bag to the side. It's time to disassemble the motorcycle to run your primary wiring harness. You'll need to remove the following parts. The gas tank, the side covers, the wire and trough cover, and the upper outer fairing. As always, we recommend when you're adding any additional electronics, you want to disconnect the negative terminal for safety. Your power harness is located in the clutch side box. You want to remove the zip ties and the wire connector as well. Let's take a look at the power harness. We have our bulkhead plug that connects to the amplifier, the Deutsch connector for the subwoofer on the clutch side, the power cable with the built-in fuse that connects to the battery, and the output cable that gets the signal from your source unit. Finally, the built-in blue wire connector for your accessory remote turn-on. All right, now lay the harness out starting from the battery compartment and separate the cables to the designated areas. On the brake side, run the bulkhead end of the harness from the battery compartment through the service compartment and exit towards the shock assembly. You can attach this with zip ties loosely just to hold the wire in place. Now on the clutch side, use a half inch socket to loosen the two bolts secure in the fuse box so we can run our harness through the service compartment along the frame and exit towards the shock. Again, use a zip tie to hold this in place. Run the remaining harness up through the wiring trough and through the clutch side of the neck into the upper fairing of the motorcycle. Now, in the upper fairing, let's make your amplifier connections. You'll be splitting the output from the source unit to both amplifiers. And to do this, you want to use a provided Y connector and need to locate the rear input of your front amplifier. On the Street Glide model, where the amplifier is mounted on top of the source unit, the input is generally to the left side with the control panel. Now on the Road Glide model, the amplifier is mounted underneath the source unit. This means you may need to remove it to locate your input terminals. Once you locate the input terminal, disconnect the rear cable and plug in the provided Y connector. Now, reconnect the rear cable 
and connect your new sub output plug. Your last connection will be the accessory turn-on. This cable will also split the turn-on power to both amplifiers. Unplug your front amplifier and plug in the built-in Y connector. Now moving back to the brake side saddle bag. Let's take a moment to test fit the bulkhead and pass-through connections and clean up your wiring feet. This is where you will ensure that you have your clearances from any moving parts and tighten down your zip ties. Repeat this on the clutch side pass through as well. Finish this process up through the wiring trough, pulling any slack up to the upper fairing. Once you have that done, remount your wiring trough cover and gas tank. Then put your side covers back on and connect the new amplifier to the battery. Now you can install your brake side saddle bag using the provided hex screws and the Z-clips labeled bag mounted screws in the blister pack. The Z-clips will replace your existing pin locks. If you have stock screw in bag mounts already, you do not need to replace the Z-clips. Be sure to securely plug in your bulkhead and pass-through connections. You'll hear a click. Tighten down the hex screws, and if you have our 6x9 kit, you can plug in the spade connectors at this time. It's time to install the subwoofer into the saddlebag. The enclosure has a built-in wire channel. Run your cable along this cutout and securely plug in the connector. Now you're ready to repeat this process on the clutch side.
Keep in mind, when you need extra space for a longer trip, you could remove the subwoofer from the saddlebag. We included this grill cover to reduce the road debris and water exposure. Simply press into place from the inside of the bag. Now that we got that done, let's test the system. Now that we've tested the system, let's get the bike put back together. As you can see, the install came together pretty easily. But if you have any questions, you can always call our tech support team, 1-800-669-9899. You can always find more information on our website at rockfordfosgate.com. We'll see you next time.